Hello everyone, this is Jasmina, and in this video I'm going to talk about um, basically about feng shui in the house and, and sectors in the house and parts of your body. Now major parts, basically organs, um, have long been associated with areas within your residence. It also applies to people within your residence, but today we don't have big families like they used to. So it's not very accurate when it comes to describing individuals within the household. But that it is also there, and that information is out there, but I'm going to summarize part of it here. Now, keeping all of your house neat, tidy, uncluttered helps keep your body in the best condition possible. Now, this will not stop you from aging or stop a condition that your genes are dictating you're vulnerable to, but it can delay the problems from occurring. And that's basically the goal because you really can't, you can't fight your genes, but you can do what you can to keep them from being activated negatively. Now, um, a missing sector in your house isn't necessarily bad, but it means that you can't use it for mitigations. Uh, and sometimes you do want to use a mitigation. When we're doing this, we're, we're really talking about you really should use a, um, a pie style chart. That is a lot more accurate than using the nine equal sector grid. Now, when I give you this list in a little bit, not all of the body parts are listed. And this is in the traditional text where they list these things. Uh, and they haven't really has any been any updates by the masters about is there more body parts do we include? So, um, but they're the, let's say these body parts that are listed are things that uh, either can kill you or can uh, make it impossible for you to work, which means you would starve to death in the old days when there was no safety net. Now, there are some disagreements about where a few body parts are placed in your house. And I'm going to give you kind of like the general summary and tell you where some of the disagreements are. Now, basically, it's the blood, the lungs, and the throat. They have been listed by different people in different sectors. So I will tell you about that. So here's the general um, thing, the general uh, thing that you'll see. Now, uh, one of the bigger disagreements is between the South and the North with blood. And you know, you, the, there's no disagreement about the eyes and the heart. Those have always been listed in the South. And since the heart pumps blood, some people wanna put the blood here. But others put it here because it's uh, something that flows through your body like water. And, of course, north is water. And so that's why they want to put blood here. This is the big one, the one that I've seen the most conflict with. But again, the heart and the eyes, very clearly in the south. The stomach and abdomen, and basically it means this anywhere in your digestive tract from your stomach downwards, that is included in the Southwest. It re also includes the reproductive org organs for both men and women. Uh, in the West, we have the mouth, the lungs, the teeth. These are some that are clearly uh, stated. Some people will put the lungs over here in the East, which I think is a little bit strange. Um, Basically here, you can think of anywhere from your lips down to, but not including your stomach would be included here. So that makes more sense. So I think the lungs should be here. Now this would also include the throat, but other people put the throat over here. So, but I do think that the West is correct for this. There's no disagreement here. The head and the brain is in the Northwest. The, year, the ears and the urinary tract is also very clearly in the north, and there's no disagreement there. It's just that questionable thing about blood. Now, the northeast is hands and fingers, and uh, this is one of those cases if you have significant problems with this, 
you probably cannot work most jobs. And that means you would starve to death, you know, before there was a, a social safety net. Here um, we have the liver, pancreas, and the feet. And again, the feet are one of those things that a long time ago, if you could not walk, you probably couldn't hold down a job. So then you would starve to death. So that makes sense that this is a serious thing. And then finally, in the southeast, we have the legs, the buttocks, and the lower spine. Uh, it could include the entire spine, but usually they want to just list, list it as the lower part, your lower back. Now, everything else gets put here in the center. This would include things like your skin um, and, and your upper back, too, and your shoulders and your arms. Um, although... They probably should be, the arms probably should be included in the Northeast, at least in my opinion, but I haven't seen it there. And uh, so basically everything else here goes into the center. Now, again, this is more accurate to use this pie style chart rather than the nine equal size rectangles when you're defining these areas of your home. This is most important when we want to do a mitigation. And I will talk about that in a bit, actually. I will talk about the video that will tell you about this in a bit. Now, there is another way to look at this. The major body parts are also associated with elements. And if you have an elemental analysis of your batsa, this can give you an indication of your weakest and strongest organs by which, which is your strongest element and which is your weakest non-zero element that corresponds to your strongest and weakest organs. There is a rub. Different masters analyze the batsa differently, and this can result with different levels of the elements. Uh, and that is really, really common. Uh, it, uh, it, it varies, I like for myself, it varies who I look at, what my elements are, you know, what, not so much what order they're in, but what level that is the, 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 the weakest and not so much the strongest, but the weakest, but even the strongest can change. So this is a little bit tricky. Now, not enough research has been done to show who is correct. Now, if we could have enough volunteers, we could actually do some analysis, but most people are not going to volunteer. Uh, this would really take money and I, think that there are quite a few masters who don't want their methods tested because they don't want to be shown to be wrong. So, you know, it's really hard to say who's right. Now, I do have some videos. Um, they're labeled uh, Health and Chinese Metaphysics, Part 1, and there's a Part 2. This was so long I had to break it up. Part 1 discusses mostly Batsa a little bit of qi men, and part two discusses feng shui and how it's related to your health. And I, these are probably worth watching if you have health issues. Um, I would love to hear from individuals who watch part one to see if their elemental breakdown corresponds to their known health issues. So you have to know what your problem is. And, and the weakest one, your weakest non-zero element is supposed to correspond to the organ that gives you the problem at your youngest age. And so it's your weakest organ. Now, I do not want you to put down your uh, time and date of birth, and you do need your date of birth to get a good, a good analysis here. I do not want you to put that down in the comments. You open yourself up to uh, identity theft, so don't do it. If you email me this, I'm not going to do it unless you pay me because this is quite a bit of work. But I think you can watch these two videos and can do it for yourself, at least part one. That shouldn't be too hard. And um, again, we don't know exactly who's going to be right because different masters analyze the boxes differently. And so that's a bit of a problem. Now, again, I do not monetize my videos, so if you watch these, you're not paying me. And uh, 
I don't even know if I can monetize this because I'm talking about things that I have been taught and maybe I cannot um, get paid for directly anyway. Now for me, when I analyze my elements, I did four different uh, people doing the analysis. I mean, these are actually not individuals, but this is uh, the analysis you can get through the web. And three out of four do properly identify my weakest organ correctly. But the Joey Yap analysis does not. Now, this doesn't mean Joey Yap's incorrect. It just means it doesn't work for me. So don't be discouraged. Um, by all means, use Joey Yap as a start because it's very clear what his anal uh, how he breaks things down. So it's the clearest one, the easiest one to read, and it's free, although you do have to register. Now, this is a summary of the tables that you would get in part one. Uh, and this has to do with your elemental breakdown in your Batsu. And you're looking for the lowest non-zero elemental strength. If you have a zero element, you know, there's no element that at all in your Batsu, it's sort of like a missing sector in your house. If you have really bad stars in a sector that's missing, those bad stars can't affect you. So that's the same kind of thing here. It, it, it's just not going to have any effect on you because there's no connection between you and that element. So in general, zero is fine. The non-zero low element, that's the one you want to look at. And if you find that corresponds to your weakest element, uh, your weakest organ, I would love to hear that. I mean, I think this is good. Uh, it, it can give me some something to score down at this this person this works for this person it doesn't work for that kind of thing now these stems and these are okay it depends on what you're talking about these are stems in chimen they're 10 gods often in batsa but also they're just listed as elements it depends on what you're talking about but whether it's stems gods or elements it's just these these things here. This is the English translation. This is how you pronounce it, I believe in Cantonese. And this is the Chinese character. Now, many of the analysis that you can get for free on the web will only list the Chinese character. So you, you kind of have to be able to read these. I think they're different enough, but um, you know, it wouldn't hurt to have a printout of this while you're checking, just to make sure you're getting the the ones, the, these elements correct by the Chinese characters. Now, they do have very distinctive positions, that is, subsectors on the 24 mountain chart, but they don't have a 100% correspondence between those sectors and what I talked about earlier. But that's okay. Now, if you remember, the Southwest had both the male and female reproductive organs. Uh, this is in the north, uh, this is in the east, so or east-ish uh, area. So these two don't, um, don't correspond to the southwest, which is where it is in the house by the traditional association. There's, there's a reason for this. One is feng shui, the other is batsa. They're different systems. And I think that's why these things disagree. What you need to understand is Batsa indicate, indicates vulnerabilities you may have. Whereas the Feng Shui, and by looking for Sha Qi, that is what can act as a trigger to make these vulnerabilities become reality. And so this is how the two work together. So I'd like to thank you for watching. Please feel free to uh, send me an email or leave a comment if you have questions. Uh, and also, I do encourage you to watch at least part one of the video because that explains quite a bit. Um, you can also check out my website if you need to uh, for finding your facing direction properly. And uh, 
the in this case the pay hip store is not very relevant thank you again for watching